you have a stick? Yeah, I got a stick. So, hi, I'm Martin Hannigan. Um, I'm actually with Akamai Technologies. I think most people know that. Um, I am the Iceland guy as well. When I speak under my own hat, so to speak, I, I prefer to use the Iceland guy. Um, but I am with Akamai. And yes, we are doing V6, but we can talk about that later. Um, so, um, today I woke up and thought about how we might contribute here. And uh, I don't have anything, anything as cool as uh, DNS or BFD. And uh, Tom, I might suggest that you might call that best female friend DD, uh, make more Facebook compatible. Um, okay, so if you're interested in something really geeky and engineering-like, this is not the talk for you. Go have a break. But if you care about how much it's going to cost to operate your network in the future, you might want to pay attention. Uh, this is a Windows machine. I don't know anything about it. Okay. Got it. Okay, so I have two files here. I have a uh, PowerPoint and I have an Excel spreadsheet. And found a problem. All right. So Macs and Windows machines don't like each other, I guess. Oh, that's a problem. Um, Okay, is it is the other spreadsheets up on the website so that people can pull them down? They can pull them and play. Don't save. Right, but what I tried to open was the PowerPoint. Oh. I'm so scared to do this, but I will. Okay, I guess that's okay then. Okay, so this talk, about, this talk is about um, IPv4 costs after depletion. Um, the conclusion of this talk is really um, an unknown, and I think you'll get the point after we walk through this a little bit. So, what's scary? Nanog attendees and speedos. I saw someone in one today, and I think I'm going to go blind after the end of the conference. Peter Cohen and Job Roulette. Someday he may end up working with you and IPv4 address depletion. Um, does anybody not believe that we're going to actually have a problem with the, in a, with the ability to get IP addresses sometime in 2011? Please raise your hand. You don't believe it? Okay, you can leave. Um, today, addresses are really cheap. You can get addresses from IRIRs. Um, you ju you, you um, justify them, show them that you have need, apply for them, um, and you'll get them. Supply, even today, supply exceeds current demand. Um, I you are able to get addresses. A slash 20, um, for the purposes of this presentation, is a fairly common and typical allocation. Um, average pre-depletion pre cost of a V4 address, um, you know, I looked at what the cost of a, uh, and the equivalency of a small org for all the RIRs was, and it's about $1.52 on a yearly recurring basis. That's pretty good. So as we approach depletion, um, the INR and the RIR system will most definitely exhaust in 2012. Does anybody not believe that? Okay, good. Demand will most definitely exceed supply. Does anybody not believe that? Okay, you can leave. Non-RIR addresses acquisition will, will begin in earnest. In other words, you'll be looking for addresses to buy from someone and more than likely it won't be an RIR. Prices will rise. Um, I think that that's a given. Market cost. Um, there actually has been uh, uh, attempted markets and actually some successful transactions. Um, the market cost of an IP address now, um, as gauged by some of those observed transactions, uh, is about $4. Increase over your current RIR cost is 263%. Um, that's fairly steep, even at $1.52 an address. And it only goes up and gets worse from there. V4 depletion, when we actually get there, Traditional channels of access to address space are going to be gone. Um, I mean, you'll still have um, the ability to access like austerity, purple, austerity policy and transition pools and whatnot at RIRs, but um, it'll be very difficult to get adequate amounts, adequate amounts of address space from those pools. Um, at that point, I think that the cost of an IP address um, at depletion will be unknown. Um, it's very difficult to plan when you have unknown variables, especially with cost. <clears throat> and the impact to your network, um, your costs, and, and your COGS overall um, is unknown again. Um, you should be very scared, and you should take some of these 
points back to your, uh, your bean counters and your sea level folks and tell them how scared you are. Uh, so I basically took an eight, a slash eight and deaggregated it and uh, built, some, built a table. And, I, and in case you don't know what a dollar is, I spread this out across the five top currencies. Um, Euro, sterling, uh, won, yen, dollars. Um, I, in the cost per dollar, uh, or in the, in the dollar cost, I basically used the $4 number, which in my opinion is extremely conservative. We've observed some eBay transactions, which were significantly more than $4, but I can't actually give you a reference to those transactions because when eBay takes down an auction, um, they delete all traces of it. It comes up and says invalid. Um, the last information point I had with relation to eBay auctions and the cost of IP address space was $40. Now, that's $40 per address, and that's before the auction got to the last 60 seconds, which is where all the pricing action happens. Um, so that's pretty scary that um, eBay will kill an auction. Um, we'll, we, we have a reference point that a single slash 32 is at $40 and that it never made it to the close. Um, who knows what it would have bid up to? Um, and who knows if that person wasn't astroturfing and bidding, bidding against himself? I don't really know. Um, a lot of weird things seem to be happening with respect to IP address space. But um, if I can open the spreadsheet, we're going to do a little bit of cost modeling. So some of the questions that you may have. Well, what business model works for acquisition? So you're going to need to have IP address space, hopefully. RIR austerity and um, transition policy will work for you. Um, right now, um, that is uh, pretty much up in the air in some of the regions. I know that APNIC has an austerity policy and some transition policy. Uh, RIPE is already, uh, has already enacted their tra uh, austerity policy. Um, what I mean by that is um, instead of um, a, a needs view or being able to justify a year's worth of need, if I remember correctly, and, and uh, please don't quote me, check for yourself, but I believe it's nine months at this point. Um, what business model is going to work? Are you going to buy them? Um, are you going to um, lock them up for a certain period of time and make some kind of take or pay arrangement? Um, will you place them in escrow um, while you clear title? You just can't go to, you just can't um, grab any 16 on the internet that's legacy and um, cut a deal without doing some significant legwork. You don't want to be kind of caught in the in the void of did that person, does that person or entity actually have legitimate access to that address space? That's a big question and it's one that's going to rear its ugly head quite often as we approach depletion. How do you not spend too much? How many addresses are going to be too much? I don't know. Um, how fast are we going to get to dual stack and how fast are we going to get rid of V4? Um, when does it make sense to stop buying addresses and, and do you do V6 for real instead? Well, we're doing V6 for real, the Iceland guy company. Um, are you doing V6 for real? Um, and when do you decide to do V6 for real? Uh, when you do decide to do V6 for real, you may still need to buy addresses for transition. Um, you, and this is a personal opinion. You can't stop the growth of the internet um, while we transition to V6, so we would have just cliffed the whole thing, shut it off for a week, made, done, applied the addresses, and just made the move. It doesn't quite work like that. We've got a lot of things that are dependent upon the internet, as you all know. Um, SSL, um, infrastructure, uh, economies, uh, trading on eBay, trading on fidelity.com, um, uh, you name it, your banking, car payments. I mean, I don't write a single check anymore. It's all automatic. It all happens online, and the internet needs to continue to work for all that to work. It is scary, the unknown future cost of IPv4. So I wanted to be able to give you something interesting to take back to the shop that may help you raise some awareness. and. Uh, I'm going to try and bring this up in the spreadsheet before I bring it up on the slide. And I was thinking, how do I, how do I continue this discussion outside of the meeting? And one of the things that I came up with was this. Oh, good, we do have Excel. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet, and you'll be able to retrieve this off of the NANOG website so you can play with the dollar cost yourself. Um, I was doing some modeling. Cap cost is cast co uh, cost of capital. Generally, when you spend money, um, there's a cost to spending that money. Um, I don't know how IP addresses are going to be accounted for. Um, so when you buy something or you lease it or you rent it or you make a deal to have some action happen, that has to be accounted. It's either going to be some capital expenditure uh, or, you know, an operational expense. And they, they go in different places in the balance sheet. And I'm, I'm not going to get too, too far into that, but I don't know how this is going to be accounted for, but there's most absolutely going to be a cost of capital. So if you, uh, if you go, let me see if I can context switch this. So 
So if you go back to this chart, and uh, sorry, I'm not a Windows user. Okay, so go to the bottom of the chart um, in the adder count and look at the slash eight, and then go directly to the right and look at the value of that slash eight at four dollars. That's real money. Um, if, for example, you had that cost, and again, I'm not really talking about a business model. I think that that'll be left out, up to other people. But if you have that cost, that's a significant amount of money, and that's going to come off of some portion of your revenue, uh, be applied to some expense over some term. Um, if you're uh, going to acquire something like a slash 24, for example, um, at $4, it's only $1,024. But at 100 it's uh, much more expensive. Um, I think 100 is actually fairly realistic, and I've been using 1000 as an amplifier. Um, not so sure that's unrealistic, but I don't have anything to really back that up right now. Um, but that, so getting, my point is, it costs money to spend money. Your money, if you can't spend your money because it's tied up and it's being expensed over a period, it costs you money. Okay. So, back to the spreadsheet. Uh, not Tom's thing. All right. Let me get to the last slide. Sorry. There we go. So I built a, uh, you can't really see this, and I'm not going to mess around with it because I'm running out of time. But uh, IPv4 address depletion office pool. Um, I, in conjunction with uh, an individual on the internet that builds uh, Excel models for uh, NFL office pools, I built one. Um, uh, at the top is the, uh, the cost, and at the, on the left-hand side is the months after uh, IANA exhaustion that the first RIR advertises their uh, depletion. Um, take this back, fill out the squares. It completely, completely randomizes the numbers. And uh, when the first RIR announces depletion, I'll be uh, announcing the market price on Nanog. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. I take it we have no questions?